Hi, I'm Todd. And I'm Amy. And welcome back to Creative Side DIY. Today's an in-depth review of how to do trim work on a chair rail. Yep, so this is a part of our series of videos on redoing our 18 month old nursery. So be sure to check out the other two videos. And also make sure you destroy the like button and subscribe to our channel to see all of our future videos and like this video if you do, all right? So we want the squares to essentially line up like this so there's no like anything like this happening because eventually it's just going to be one line. But what was happening is we were lined up like this. So what I'm going to do is cut off half of the end of this piece so that when we bring it back, it should line up like this. And then we can make our cut, our line to cut. So this piece is going to be a corner piece, so it's going to be butting up to the corner of a wall. So I have to make a cut on the end so that when we put the piece on the other side of the wall, they butt up and make a perfect square in the corner. Now my saw here only goes 45 degrees that way. Not 45 degrees this way, which that's actually we can get this way for the angle. So the only way, the way to fix that is um, when you put your piece of wood in, put it in like you normally would, and then flip it over, and then your angle will be the right way. There it is. That's for the corner. Now I need to go remeasure to mark my spot. So I had to move my mark just a hair from making that angle cut on the corner. So now I've got the right mark here. Uh, the squares still line up, so I can cut this one here on an angle, and then um, they should fit together seamlessly without any gaps. Okay, so now we're going to cut right there on this same angle so that this piece fits right into the other piece. There we have it right on the line with an angle and there's our wall. Moment of truth. Does it fit and do they line up? Oh, pretty close. Perfect, almost. So this should be my last angle cut. Everything else will be flat from here on out. But I need this angle to be the opposite direction so that it butts up in the corner with that other one so we make a perfect square. So we're trying to get this corner to be a perfect square. So this is gonna go over here, something like that. So I'm marking my mark right, short of the wall here. The, the trim of the closet actually. All right, so now I need a straight cut. There it is. Okay, so I'm gonna adjust my uh, saw for a straight cut and then chop this one down. There's 
straight edge along with my corner edge. <laughs> hey cutie. <laughs> Are you the gatekeepers? Are you the gatekeepers, Miss Utterly Adorable? So, uh, you may have never done any kind of blood work before, and you may be wondering, how did they know, they're school teachers, how did they know how to do that? Amy and I went through the process of replacing our floors in our last house by ourselves. Uh, so we learned how to do, <laughs> we learned how to do um, baseboards and all the angle cuts and things like that uh, from that. So, once you go through that process of learning and doing it, the main thing is just get out there and do it yourself because you'll, you'll have to figure it out. And that's what it was for us is we had to figure it out. So we figured it out. That's how we got to put on these trim pieces and cut them, cut the right angles. But mainly all you're dealing with is 245s because you want to make a 90 degree angle for corners like this. Um, and then whenever you have a piece that's not long enough across the center of a wall, you, you're still making both a 45 because they're going to meet up together and slide into each other. Um, the angle is just the same way when you're going the same on the wall. So you'll see as we put these together. Let's see how this turned out. Hopefully it should fit snugly on the wall and it does. Look, I don't even have to hold it. Okay, that's perfect. And then this one should slide right in and make a nice edge there and it does. Now you can see a little bit of gap in the front. We're not worried about that because we're going to put caulk in it anyways. Uh, but that's just what happens when you have a piece that has a special design on it. We're actually going to bring this around to the other side of the closet too and stop it here. So um, now we have an easy cut because we need a straight edge here and a straight edge here and voila, then. If I have a design like this, yeah. On a sword fight, ding, ding, ding. Um, when you have a perfect design like this uh, and you want, to, you want it to end with a perfect design, just turn the end that you want it to end with, uh, or where you want to, and put the perfect design there, and then mark your cut mark on the other edge. So, so there's your perfect square here. So I'm going to mark right there. That's how the corner is supposed to look, so it'll be a perfect edge there, and now it is. So we've got an Aero finish nailer here, that's what we're using. It's electric, just plugs in. I also have a, a nail gun that works off an air compressor, but we're only upstairs and running the line, it's really loud when we're in here right now, we don't really want to scare her, so this is what we're using. It, it will do the job, it's for finish uh, trim anyways. Let's start with this one, I guess. This is As we go along, we're making sure that each piece is perfectly level and matching up exactly how we want it to before it's nailed in. So it doesn't take long once you're in the groove of it, and we just keep rechecking the level over and over again. We also make sure that we know how high it is so that when we go around to the other side of the closet, we have it all perfectly lined up throughout the room. The final step is to add caulk to anywhere the wood met up with another piece of wood to make that really seamless finish and then it's ready to paint. Be sure to check out our other videos to see how this turns out in the green scheme of her room in what we did with the colors.